Well, California had a big heat wave last year that crashed the uh, state electrical system and in February was Texas's turn because of a blizzard. Well, this summer, both uh, uh, states are having troubles once again because of high heat. So we're going to talk to energy economist Ed Hurst from the University of Houston about what the issues are and what, if anything, can be done about them. So welcome to the interview, Ed. Thank you, Marco. Well, look, let's start with Texas first. Um, lots of criticism of the problems that came out of the blizzard in February where, you know, the system... People were without uh, electricity for days in some cases, high uh, electricity bills, some of them as high as $10,000. Are we looking at a repeat of that, but instead caused by the heat instead of the cold? Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, this has been a um, train wreck and process for, for 20 years. The, the market in, in Texas was doomed to fail. Um, we wrote about it in 2013. Um, and, and so that's, you know, that's one forecast that, that an economist didn't need to have happen. But the, the Texas grid has turned into a serial killer. You know, even by the state's own numbers, 154 people died. Uh, the Houston Chronicle says 194. BuzzFeed has come up with 700 just from analyzing the state records. You know, this is a, a travesty. <laughs> the energy capital of the United States essentially the energy capital of the world, and we can't keep the lights on. Well, what are the problems? Uh, I, I guess the problem is very simple. You've got uh, high uh, demand caused by high heat. People turn on their air conditioners uh, when it gets up to 95 or 100, and that's overloading the system. But what are the you know, top one or two systemic problems that are, are causing the system to fail? Well, there's only one systemic problem. The fact is that for eight of the last 10 years, the revenues to generation companies are less than their total cost of, of providing the electricity. Uh, I pointed this out in 2013. I said, you know, their, their, their algorithms, their planning, their pricing, they don't allow for a return on capital. And I likened it to Kantorovich model of the Soviet economy you know, a big linear programming problem, uh, except there was no cost of capital involved. And oh, by the way, uh, Kantorovich had a problem with the weather and had a big crop failure. So the year he's accepting the Nobel Prize, along with my professor, Charling Koopmans, for the application of linear programming to, to real world situations, he protested that he was just a physicist and uh, you know, had nothing to do with driving the Soviet economy down the, uh, the drain. Now, you're gonna to need to explain that a little bit, Ed, uh, because it would seem that in the, the land of uh, you know, market economics, uh, Texas ought, and Texas has a wholesale, uh, uh, a wholesale market, it has an independent system operator. Why isn't that system providing enough returns to uh, utilities uh, you know, for them to earn a, a return on profit? Well, uh, ERCOT is essentially an old style Soviet purchasing bureau, a monopsonist, one buyer on a daily basis. Keep in mind that the Texas grid pre this, this so-called deregulation, which is just something that's regulated differently, had, had built for reliability. And so there were generation plants here on the grid that only operated a couple of weeks out of the year and the rest of the time they were idle. Well, under a regulated rate of return, you know, those companies could still count on covering their cost of capital. Uh, Enron, Ken Lay, went to Governor George W. Bush and said, hey, look, you've got all these plants that are, that are idle 11 months out of the year. We need to, you know, we could save Texans money. And so they created this, this monopsony entity called ERCOT. And ERCOT requires these generators to bid into the system every day. You know, so think of it. Let's go with, say, the Toronto Blue Jays as, a, as an example of an electricity-only market. You know, only those guys playing the game tonight are getting paid. The fellows on the bench are not getting a paycheck unless they get into the game. They sell a relief pitcher, a pinch hitter. But, you know, the majority, they're not getting a check. They can't continue going forward. You know, they'll starve to death 
And so the generators on the Texas fleet have to com compete uh, just to keep employees in place. And, and the prices are bid down, uh, bid down below cost because of that. And, and you reach as, you know, those of us who, who teach microeconomics will point out, you know, the shutdown rule is, is price less than average total cost. So we've had deterioration. We've had generation companies leave the grid. We've had units leave the grid. Um, and, and there's no incentive to invest or reinvest. Final question on Texas, Ed. Uh, is there a movement afoot to actually reform the, the electricity system so that it functions in a way that doesn't you know, uh, collapse in the event of a, a blizzard or you know, a heat wave? No. The legislature uh, passed a couple of patty cake bills. The governor signed them, declared, uh, uh, in the words of, of former President Bush, mission accomplished but none of it addresses the underlying problems. Uh, it's, it's all band-aids and, and papering over. All right, let's turn to California, which has its own systemic problems. What's going on there? Well, California you know, led the way with deregulation. Uh, and Texans showed them how flawed it was in the debacle in 2000, 2001, when Enron gained the system. Uh, and, and made hundreds of millions of dollars, actually extended the life of Enron beyond where it, it probably should have failed. Uh, that led to the recall of Governor Davis and, and the election of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right now, uh, California has been so aggressive in, in making sure that they provide low cost electricity to their, their consumers and, and a big move to green and renewable that they do not have a fundamentally reliable grid. You know, very much like Texas. You know, the, in Texas, the max uh, uh, dispatchable electricity is 65,000 megawatts. And the expected peak demand is 77,000 megawatts. By the way, we, we got in trouble at 70,000. And California's grid is much smaller than Texas. They have to import on a daily basis 35% of their electricity. Um, they, they don't have enough to replace the coal, natural gas, and nuclear plants that they've shut down. And they have to rely upon power from Oregon, Washington, Wyoming, and Arizona just to make ends meet on a, on a daily basis. And they've so constrained the big operators, uh, uh, Southern Cal Edison, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric, that they have also let their infrastructure decay to the point where it breaks. And of course, that's the genesis of the, of the killer fires. California has a killer grid every bit as much as the Texas grid is a killer. Right. I mean, the, the, the grid in high winds will... will uh have malfunctions and then it starts wildfires and then you, we all know what what that leads to. Well, again, I'll ask the same question that I did about uh, ERCOT in, in Texas. Is there uh, you know any effort being made to reform the system so that it generates as much electricity as needed at peak uh, you know during peak loads? And uh, are they going to fix it, or are we in for are Californians in uh, for another summer of disaster? I think Californians are in for another summer of disaster. You know, the, the governor and the legislators don't want to raise rates. Uh, they know that that is uh, poison to their, their reelection. Um, but there's just little political integrity in California or Texas. Well, that is discouraging news for both Texas and Californians. And uh, I fortunately don't live in either one of those uh, jurisdictions, but you do, Ed. So all the best in this summer. And thank you very much for your insights. I'm, I'm going to go get a cold beer. <laughs>